That's our intro, take one, Mark. Hello everybody, I'm Eddie from Eddie's Grocer and we are in the store today filming and talking about the za'atar, one of my favorite seasonings. So the way to say za'atar in Arabic is za'atar, which the double A's right after each other makes that uh, like sound in a way, which is hard for you to say, but it's easy for me to say. Uh, but za'atar is one of the biggest spices in the Middle East. Each region has its own type of za'atar, of course. So even in my family, we have a bit of rivalry between the two za'atars. So my mom's side of the family is from Aleppo, Syria. So their za'atar is a little different. It has less sumac and a bit more spice in it. My dad's side of the family is from a small fishing village in the north of Lebanon, Enfis. So we had a lot of herbs everywhere there. So that za'atar was more herbaceous, but also had a bit more sumac in it. So it made it more citrusy. So my two side of the family always had, you know, that Sunday back and forth on which za'atar was better. So the common za'atar ingredients that we have here at Eddie's Grocer are thyme, oregano, sesame seeds, sumac, and salt. So we're about to make some za'atar paste. Uh, one of the simplest things to make is something that you would find on, in every single house in a little bowl with maybe some saran wrap on top of it on the counter. It's something that you don't put in the fridge. It's vegan, it's gluten-free, it's whatever you want to call it. It is the staple of the staples. All you're doing is mixing up some za'atar with olive oil. Now, every grandmother you talk to will say differently. Some might want it loose, some might like it thick, some might use canola oil. My grandmother only used olive oil, so what we're gonna do is only use olive oil. The za'atar kind of absorbs the olive oil and it becomes a paste-like consistency. And this is what we want to achieve right here, this type of consistency. And the great thing about this is you can add as much olive oil as you want or as very little, and then when you're using it, you can add more as you go. But it's kind of just, this is the base to so many different dishes in Lebanon and just something that you would have at all times. So I'm gonna make a little tartine like my mom would make us in the morning before school. So a great thing about za'atar is that it has dry thyme in it and dry thyme is supposed to open up your brain cells in the morning. So when we have a big test, we my mom would make us one of these tartines to start our morning off. It's funny, you know, growing up, my sister would like the white side, but I like the darker side because it's a bit more toasty. So I'm gonna just do that and just lay some za'atar right on top. I'm gonna spread that on there. And really, this is as simple as it gets. This is like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich in the morning. I'm just gonna roll it up. And this is a perfect little tartine to have with your juice in the morning. And it opens up your brain cells. All right, so za'atar gets all over your teeth, so I was just cleaning my teeth out, and now let's make some za'atar manoush. So what manoush is, is basically a flatbread with za'atar baked on top of it. So I remember on Sundays walking with my grandmother to the bakery before going to church, I remember like my grandmother and all the other grandmothers would have a bowl of za'atar paste just like this with their saran wrap on top of it. And you know, that's how far the rivalry would go, is that every grandmother thought their za'atar paste was so good that they would have to bring their own za'atar paste to the bakery so the baker could use it and they would like label theirs in some way some shape or form and you know all the grandmothers would be looking at each other like what what's going on with your za'atar like mine's a little different mine's more loose mine has more olive oil in it so what i like to do is uh, a little hack of course is not make your own dough but purchase these uh you know, non breads from the grocery store. All grocery stores kind of have these non breads nowadays. So, all we're doing is taking some of the za'atar paste and spreading it on top. Pretty simple. I would say about like two to three tablespoons on each. Think about this like a pizza. So, what you're doing is you're spreading the za'atar paste like a tomato sauce and leaving a border all around the manouche so then the za'atar paste doesn't go off of the manouche. I'll wait. Okay. I'm gonna pop this down in the oven. All right, so we're gonna pop this down in the oven for about like six minutes at 400 degrees, and then we're gonna top it off with some veggies. And you know, I advise you at home, if you are gonna try this, to really taste the za'atar paste raw on its own, and then taste it when it's cooked, and you'll see the big, big difference between the two. 
So I'm gonna set these aside for a second while they cool down and I'm gonna make something that I like to call a Mediterranean or Middle Eastern pico de gallo. Now, my dad used to love mint in his za'atar manouche, but you know, to each their own. I think there's a lot of enough herbs in the manouche mixture, the za'atar mixture, so I feel like a little salty and brineness from the olives gives it that, sorry. I'll restart. <laughs> and Kalamata olives give it like a nice brininess, saltiness to it that I think takes the za'atar manouche to that next level that you're looking for. So now we're gonna take the za'atar manouche and you'll see it's beautifully crisp on the bottom. That's because the za'atar piece cooked the bottom because it has a lot of oil in it. So we're gonna put that delicious salsa right on top. And you know, the za'atar paste and the manouche is, it's, pretty dark, I would say, in flavor. So this is gonna really brighten it up and give it that spark that you're looking for in the morning. You can eat it as is whole, or you can slice it up into pieces, which is what I'm gonna do. You know, this is a great brunch snack to have out for when people are coming over. You know, it's that easy. It's like a slice of um, pizza in a way in the morning. It's a morning pizza. That's what we're gonna call it, a morning pizza. I'm just gonna cut that and... Mm. So good. The salsa on top, I think, is what makes the manouche the manouche. And each region, each family has their own za'atar, but they also have their own toppings on top. So my dad would put labneh on top of this and some mint, but I like tomato and cucumber and olives. My grandmother wouldn't put anything on top of it, would just eat it as is. So it depends on what you like, but I think a little salsa on top goes a long way. So we always keep things zesty here at the grocer. So I decided to make these like zesty lemony za'atar potato wedges for you. But really truly you can use any vegetable that you want. So you can use cauliflower, you can even do this with chicken or fish. I mean, the opportunities are endless. So what I did was pre-cook some potatoes. I just boiled them up for 12 minutes. Pre-cooking them hydrates them with the water so then they don't come out really dry at the end. All right, so I just cut up all our potatoes into wedges and now I'm gonna make the sauce. Going to culinary school, everybody's mincing and chopping garlic. I think it is such a waste of time. This is the easiest way to do garlic and, you know, a no-brainer. There you go. Took a whole second. And you really want this to be juicy. Like, you want that extra brothiness for the potatoes because they're going to really soak it all up. And now it's time to add our secret ingredient, which is the za'atar. So I'm gonna add about like two pinches in here, two large pinches. I would say about two to three tablespoons. You know, I don't measure anything, but that's what makes it the fun part of cooking is not measuring and then seeing what it's gonna come out. And now I'm just gonna put that right on top of our potatoes and then we'll toss it all together. Don't you worry. Another great thing to add here is a little bit of chicken stock. The chicken stock almost like caramelizes the potatoes as well, but we're not doing that today. But I think that is always a great little trick. So you see there's enough liquid on the sheet tray that this is not going to be dry and the potatoes are gonna soak this all up. All right, so our potatoes baked for about 15 minutes. Of course, here at the grocer, our uh, oven's a little wild, so it, kind of burnt the lemon crisps on the bottom, but it got the potatoes real crispy, which is what we were looking for. And what I'm gonna do is do a little fun plating for you. So I've got some labne, and I love labne with any potato or chicken or fish. So I'm gonna like lay that down on the bottom of the plate. Just taking some of these, of course, I've got a huge spatula because at the grocer, everything is large and in charge. I'm gonna put those right on top and you'll see the bottom, the potato skin has really crisped up, which is what we are looking for, but they are still soft and delicious and not dry. Mm. It's lemony, it's garlicky, has lots of za'atar in there. And if there's not enough za'atar for you, you can always add extra za'atar right it, when it comes out of the oven. The raw za'atar with the cooked za'atar together, when you're tasting that on a potato, on a fish, or on a chicken, it's like layers and layers and layers right there. So, of course, labne is what takes it to the next level. I love that yogurt on there. Mm -mm -mm. All right, so a simple, delicious side dish that we whipped up in 20 to 30 minutes. That's what we're looking for. 
And always remember to keep things zesty. So adding a little zest, adding a little lemon to anything that you're making is gonna go a long way. And of course, a little spice. I hope you learned a little bit about za'atar today, whether it's paste or making your own blend at home. And I hope to see you soon at the grocer. If you enjoyed today's recipes and video, make sure to like and subscribe. Hope to see you soon.